Hi, I'm Michael Odie, a SolarWinds contributor and president and CTO of Tekka Inc. And today we're going to talk about using the resource governor to limit I.O. So what are we going to cover? First, we're going to look at an overview of what the resource governor is all about, when it was first introduced and what it was designed to do. Then we're going to dig a little deeper. We're going to look at some of the resource governor components. And then we're going to look at some code for actually limiting I.O. using that resource governor. And then we'll jump into a quick demo that shows you how it all works. So what's the resource governor all about? Well, it was first introduced with SQL Server 2008, and it was designed to control resource usage, primarily in enterprise and multi-tenant kind of environments, where if one runaway query or report got away, it could impact the performance of other types of workloads that were on the system. So the, the design of this is to be able to control the resources used by a given set of applications. So you could say control ad hoc queries, control the resources used by end user reporting, and other sorts of applications that may have a big impact on performance and may affect other applications that are running. The whole idea behind the resource governor is to give you more predictable response time. It was first introduced with SQL Server 2008, but that original implementation only allowed it to uh, govern CPU and memory utilization. With SQL Server 2014, Microsoft enhanced the resource governor, and it allowed it to include I.O. as well. And I.O. is vital because it is one of the main components, probably even more important than CPU and memory when you consider uh, impact of other applications that are running. It is important to consider, though, as you get ready to use the resource governor, that this is an Enterprise Edition feature only. Uh, it was with SQL Server 2008. It is with SQL Server 2014. So what are some of the components in the resource governor? Well, the most basic one is a resource pool. And a resource pool basically represents the physical resources of a given database instance. And when you go to, to limit the resources used, you basically create your own resource pool and you tell it what you're limiting, whether it be CPU, memory, or I.O. Next, you create a workload group. And a workload group basically represents similar jobs that are running on the system. And then, when you go to limit the resources that are used by one or more applications, you're going to create your own user-defined workload group, and put your um, and that workload group is going to be connected into the resource pool that you created earlier. Finally, you're going to create a classifier function. The classifier function basically looks at those incoming requests and it routes them according to the appropriate workload group. Either it's going to route them over to the custom workload group if uh, the criteria defined in your classifier function matches, or if it doesn't, it will route them over to the default workload group. So let's have a look at some of the code that it takes to create this. When we go to limit I.O. with the resource governor, there's a few uh, T-SQL statements that are out there that help us to do these things. The first is the create resource pool statement. And here at the top, you can see where I'm creating a resource pool called my resource pool and limiting the max IOPS per volume to 500. Next, I'm using the create workload group um, statement to create a new workload group called my workload group and it's pointing back to that original resource pool that we created. And then at the bottom you can see our classifier function and here it's called my classifier function and it's basically looking at a value called original DB name and it's matching that to AdventureWorks. So basically this means any requests that come in from AdventureWorks are going to be routed over to the my workload group and any others are going to be routed to the default workload group. That's what this uh, looks like in code, so let's see a quick demo. Okay, let's go ahead and see how we can use the resource governor to limit I.O. on a system. And in this instance, we're going to limit the I.O. for the AdventureWorks database. So let's first open up uh, SQL Server Management Studio. And here we can see we have a few queries created. Um, remember, when we use the resource governor, there are three components that we need to worry about. The resource pool, the workload group, and the classifier function. So let's first look at creating a resource pool. So we're going to use the create resource pool T-SQL statement, and then we're going to use uh, the two parameters max IOPS per volume and min IOPS per volume. And in this case, we're going to limit the maximum IOPS per volume to 500. So let's go ahead and execute this. So now the system is going ahead and it's creating a resource pool for us. It takes it just a second to do that 
and now that resource pool is created. And again, this is going to limit our IOPS to 500 for this given workload group. Now we're going to create a workload group and this workload group basically classifies functions and we're going to call it my workload group and we're going to use the create workload group command and we're going to associate it with that my resource pool that we just created. So let's go ahead and run this one. So you can see it's going ahead and executing the query and now it's creating a resource group for us and it has done it. And the final component is that classifier function. So the classifier function is shown over here and here is our classifier function and in this case I've called it my classifier function and it is going to basically look at incoming requests and every request that has the database name of AdventureWorks it's going to route to that my workload group that we just created and remember my workload group was associated with uh, my resource pool which limited those IOPS to 500. If it's not the AdventureWorks database it's going to return default so everything is going to run in the default workload group which comes standard with all the systems. Once we've gone ahead and created this function we go ahead and alter the resource governor and we tell it the classifier function that we're going to use. And in this case it's this classifier function that we've just created. So let's go ahead and execute that and you can see that it's gone ahead and, and done it. Now let's go ahead and go over and have a look at our instance here. And here's our resource governor. Let's go ahead and refresh it. And it's going ahead and doing that. And if we go under here and look at refresh and we open up resource pools, here's the my resource pool that we just created. There's our workload groups underneath it there's our my workload group that's under there so you can see that we've gone ahead and created a resource pool workload group and classifier function for the resource governor that will limit IOs and now if we go and look at our resource governor we can bring up its properties and there we can see that classifier function that we just created is associated with this given resource pool and that's the end of this presentation on the resource governor thank you for watching